Alright, now we can start to rebuild this stunning movement. Give grease to the inside of the barrel drum. For that I use a thick black grease Kluber P125. Apply evenly in 5 different spots. Tip when giving oil, the rule is less is more. And now you can place the new mainspring. Pay close attention on how to refit the mainspring, in this case clockwise. Evenly push the mainspring into the barrel. Apply pressure to both sides, thus preventing the mainspring to jump away. After oiling the barrel arbor, gently place it in the center of the mainspring and barrel. The barrel arbor hook needs to align perfectly with the center opening of the mainspring. Next, fit the barrel cover and close the barrel. Use a barrel cover closing tool for the best result. The new mainspring has been fitted and the barrel complete is shut well. Gently place the barrel complete with mainspring. Escape wheel. Second wheel, the third wheel, and the great wheel. Stop lever. Barrel and train wheel bridge. Make sure the wheels can move freely before screwing on the bridge. The axis of the escape wheel is still a bit out of place. Now these wheels move freely. Before tightening the bridge screws, check again if the wheels run freely. When this checks out, we can tighten the screws. The crown wheel. and the crown wheel core.
To spread the oil evenly, you can gently turn the movement parts when in place. Ratchet wheel Now turn the movement upside down. Sliding pinion. And the winding pinion. The winding stem, remember less is more when it comes to giving oil. Yoke spring, Rocking bar The setting lever the yoke in case of excess oil gently remove it with some watchmakers putty prodigal setting wheel Setting lever jumper and the intermediate setting wheel. Control the workings of the setting lever. Driver cannon pinion. Here. It is important, a sufficient amount of oil is applied and spread evenly, which is rather difficult to do. Remove excess oil with the Rodico. To have a controlled refitting of the driver cannon pinion, I use my hand setting refitting tool. Next, we continue by giving oil to the jewels.
and I can't stress this enough, less is more. To remove the end stone, you first need to open the Inca block shock absorber spring. For this, you can use a small screwdriver. Very carefully, lift the Inca block shock absorber spring and remove the end stone. The end stone consists of two parts, the insetting and the cap jewel. Then remove the old oil from the cap jewel by gently rubbing it down on a piece of paper. And now we can treat the end stone. Fixodorp is a surface treatment, preventing the spreading of liquid lubricants. Submerge the cap jewel for about 10 seconds in the Fixodrop liquid. Swirl gently. Dry the cap jewel and the end setting with an air blower. Cap jewel. A shock absorber should be covered with lubricant between 50 till 80 percent by the diameter of the cap jewel. Replace the end setting over the cap jewel. Replace the end setting with cap jewel back into the shock absorber and close the shock absorber spring on both sides. Turn the movement upside down. Pallet fork. Pallet bridge. Before tightening the screws of the pallet bridge, wind the watch a little bit and test the working of the pallet fork. Balance complete. The oiling of the pallet stones on the pallet fork will be explained in detail in one of my next videos. There we are, the basic movement is reassembled. How the corner part of this movement is reassembled, I will show you in the next video. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and then I see you in the next video. Thank you.